Hey, welcome back to the channel. So a little while ago on my main Evnos channel, I reviewed the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 1. In that review, I mentioned how bad it is with the default Windows installation and mentioned that it could be improved with Linux. Well, that is what we're looking at today. We're looking at the Lenovo IdeaPad Slim 1 with Linux. First, let's talk a little bit about the specs of this machine. The model that I'm reviewing was previously on sale for just under 200, and now it's currently selling for right around 230 bucks uh, US from Best Buy. For that $230, you get an AMD A6-9220E dual-core processor with the Radeon R4 integrated graphics, 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and 64 gigabyte eMMC storage. This storage is pretty slow by today's standards, and unfortunately, none of this hardware is upgradable. One thing that's good about this machine is it has a pretty good selection of ports, including two full-size USB 3.1 ports, a full-size HDMI, and a card reader on the left side, and then a single mic headphone port on the right side. There's also an integrated webcam, but all I can say is that it works, and in a pinch, it's better than nothing. The screen is 14 inches with a resolution of 1366 by 768. It's got pretty poor viewing angles and somewhat washed out colors. Uh, it's pretty much like the screen that you would expect at this price point. Another thing that's really good about this machine is the keyboard and trackpad. There are, the keyboard is great to type on and the trackpad is actually very, very responsive. For the purposes of this video, I have Kubuntu 20.04 installed. I've also themed it to look like Mac OS since this kind of reminds me of a MacBook Air, so I thought I'd have some fun with it. If you want to see more about how I theme this, I'll put a link down in the description that you can check out that video. Now, before someone tells me the results would be better with something more lightweight like XFCE, the truth is they're just not. KDE Plasma is very efficient nowadays, and I've run these same tests on things that are considered more lightweight like XFCE with no noticeable change. All right, let's start this off by talking about things that didn't get any better by installing Linux. First is gaming. Old games and some 2D games like RimWorld work okay, but anything that relies on multiple cores or GPU performs horribly. This is true in both Windows and Linux, doesn't make a difference. Even Minecraft at 720p with everything set as low as I could set it was just totally unplayable. In fact, Minecraft plays much better on my Chromebook in the native Linux support than it does on this machine. The other thing that didn't get any better is video editing. Using Caden Live, even with the preview set all the way down, 1080p was completely uneditable. Now you may be able to improve this by making proxy files, but the truth is that the processor on this computer is so slow and only dual core that it would take forever to generate those proxies and it's just not worth it. Because of the weak processors and the minimal RAM and that you can't upgrade either of those, there's just not much you can do to improve this, unfortunately. So that's the bad and things that didn't improve by installing Linux. Here is the good and things that did improve. First of all, light photo editing in GIMP works very, very well, even large file sizes. It's not totally smooth and it will bog down if you do a lot of processing, but for quick corrections, basic editing, it works great. What saw the most dramatic change with Linux was the day-to-day -day usage of the computer, the speed at which apps open, how quickly you can change between the open apps, the management of the multitask applications, and just the overall performance are greatly improved with Linux over Windows. Office applications and things like that also work very, very well. If you're looking for a lightweight computer with great battery life to do general computing tasks, this may be an option for you. With Windows on this computer, I didn't even want to use it, but now that it has Linux on it, this computer is the one that I grab when I wanna browse the web, do emails, or catch up on my social media while sitting on the couch. If you're looking for a video editing or gaming computer, just don't even consider this one, but if you're looking for, again, one of those general purpose computers, then it may be worth picking up and replacing Windows with Linux. Now, hopefully you found this useful and informative. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing if you haven't done so yet. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.